Hi everyone, it's Dwellis, Kiwi Scrapper from New Zealand. Uh, here to share with you today um, a video on a box that I've just altered. Um, there's been such an upheaval in YouTube at the moment that um, I've just had time to work on this box on my days off um, because I couldn't upload any videos, I couldn't make any comments on below any videos, I couldn't reply to any comments. My inbox totally disappeared from my iPad but I found it on my main computer. Well that had disappeared again this morning on the main computer but it's back at the moment and I'm uploading a video um, showing some prize giving, uh, prize winning <laughs> from a challenge I did. Um, so here I am, I'm back to sh show you this um, altered box. Uh, this has just been put here while well, I'm nabbering on. Isn't it pretty? Love this kind of thing. Um, yes, while I'm here actually, um, the other uh, in my last video of an altered wall hanging, um, I was showing you some things that I dyed with red cabbage. Um, and they were quite pale lilac and very pretty for shabby sheep projects. I'd only left them in for two hours because I was heading off to work. So um, this time I left them in I did another lot and I left it in for I think it was about seven hours and the, the colour has come out much more intense. So this was a cream or a white-ish vintage doily. Isn't that a beautiful colour? It's just come out beautiful. Um, and here's some... This was bright stark white. That's come out quite quite lovely um, deeper lilac-y lavender shade. Um, that's the same. That's just lace fabric. That's come out really pretty. There's some more. Um, this is an antique piece of Bottere Anglaise. That was a very stark white colour. As you can see, that's now a beautiful lavender. Um, the tulle really didn't take at all. That was white tulle, and it's still. Oh, it's the palest, faintest lilac and that piece didn't take hardly at all either so you you know you you do some and you some of them you don't do and that piece there came out blue <laughs> that was a white piece it came out blue and this was a white piece and that came out lavender so you know it's interesting so you just boil up a red cabbage and when the water's nice and purple you turn it off and um put your things on and you know, I mean that that they're that they're really strong, lovely lilac colours, lavender colours. So that's really pretty. Anyway, right, on to my altered box. After all that n nattering to you. Um, okay, so this was um, something I picked up in a op shop, which is for a shop to you guys in America, charity shop. Um, about I think last week it cost me 50 cents which is you know like the cheapest thing I think I've ever been able to buy in a, thrif uh, a thrift shop here um, because they normally go oh you can get some smaller doilies for 50 cents but most mostly it's a dollar upwards um, so this was um, it was sort of a floral chintzy colour um, a floral chintzy linen print and um, fabric all over it and inside it it's a jewellery box um, and it's got a part for rings. Now, I actually haven't done anything to the inside yet, so I will show you that later. I really haven't decided whether I want to pull out the bits inside and just do a plain jewellery box or keep the ring part. Um, I don't know, so I thought I'd put this up anyway, even though I haven't done the inside yet. And it'll show you what was what the major box was. And it was very, very grubby looking, and you know, you can imagine what you get for 50 cents. So, But it's a nice shape. It's kind of like curved and then it goes back in a curve which the back is narrower than the front and over there and I put some feet on it to raise it up so the first thing I did was um, I covered it all all the outside and this lovely um, it looks like a sort of a I don't know it's not satin it's sort of like a crepe de chine very nice peach color peachy pink color and I got that from an op shop as well. 
not much money. So I covered that all in there and that's what's showing underneath. And then over top of that I put some um, avocado dyed pink lace fabric. So it had been originally white lace fabric um, but I dyed it in avocado skins and it came out a nice vintage pink colour. So th I put that over the top of the, um, the peachy pink sort of crepe de chine fabric. Um, I only put it on the top, didn't put it anywhere else. The bottom I actually just put paper um, because it was quite a messy job putting all the fabric and gluing it down and everything else and you're not going to see the bottom so I just used one of my papers. Um, so then I put um, this very fine, just get there, very fine trim, it's sort of like a braid, like a Chinese braid and it's in a lovely um, ivory colour very very delicate. I only had a small piece of it so I took it from yeah, this edge round here and it goes to halfway back here but that was alright because I knew I was going to be covering up the edges of all the rest so that's the first thing I put on and then I um, put this piece here which is like a Venice lace again that was just a short length I had of a few inches so I took that from this and I curved it and came up to the back here which you can't actually see but it's curved from this edge right up to the back edge. Uh, then I wanted to use this avocado dyed tulle, it's a very fine tulle um, and that was originally an ivory colour that's dyed up a lovely vintage pink so I had a bag of buckles Diamante and silver buckles that I got from um, a thrift shop and a few weeks ago for very cheaply and this was one of them it's quite an ornate buckle vintage buckle um, in a sort of a silvery colour so I arranged the chill doubled it up and arranged it through the buckle so that it was like a bow with the um, you know well, it, it just looks like a bow, really, or puffy. And, and then I put in um, Wild Orchid Craft large rose down the back there and popped up this um, chill bow and the buckle, silver buckle. Then I toned down the silver buckle um, just by adding bits of um, my favourite pink paint, acrylic paint here, pink lemonade. I just popped that over not all over it, I didn't want, I still wanted the silver showing, I just popped it over bits of the scrolls and bits of other pieces on it um, maybe you can see that there just so that it wasn't a solid silver uh, and then I put two Wild Orchid Craft uh, roses, open roses, smaller than this one at the back um, one is sort of a solid pink, the other one's more of a mottled salmony, peachy pink, that one there and at, at that moment that was all I did on that bit. Um, and I came over here and spotted a glue string. Oh, I've got to keep my fingers off it. Um, I popped in two silver leaves, leaves here. Um, these were from, I don't know, a Christmas bouquet that I bought in an op shop a long time ago. And I'd just taken all the leaves off with the idea that I was going to paint them all and white and use them on projects and I will do that but for this particular project the silver went really really well and this one sort of had some brown sprayed over it as well not by me whoever did it so put those two there at angles I wanted them silver because they toned in with the silver there and, um, and then I started to put some flowers so we've got a Wild Orchid Craft um, mocha or coffee open rose there and we've got some the pink ones around here cream one there wild orchid craft orchid uh, no it's not an orchid it's an easter lily i think it's called in there and this is the um mocha chocolate i think it's called wild orchid craft large rose um and there's another one on the other side so it just matches that one and i sort of put, put those around there this is a pink um organza rose with a crystal center it just popped in over there and then I popped in one of my beautiful just gorgeous I just love them my little raspberry birds that I got off Blitzy 
Aren't they just beautiful? I wish I could get some more of those. I think I've got one more packet left. So I've got three. So I know if Sonia Steptoe is watching this, Sonia, it's a bird. Sonia loves birds. And we all know the story of her lost birds, don't we? So that just popped in there. I uh, came over t to this corner and I wanted to really mimic what was in over here on here but this one I raised up so that it's higher it's going it's been done on the chill it's sitting there quite 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 good cream pink well that's the salmony pink and a little cream pinky one down the bottom there um, before I did that I put in this um, applique in there not sure where I got that from could have been Irene or Sonia in a swap I don't have many appliques that I've bought myself. Then I put a bling acrylic doodah, I think they're called doodads, something flower there. I think that's what Lily calls them, I'm not sure. Lily Dinica. Um, and one over here as well, the little bling centers, the iridescent, sparkly. Um, then I had this, um, I think it's a Melissa's, Melissa Francis Cupid, which I got off one of the Etsy shops, um, a packet of two different ones. And I wanted to use one of them, so he went in there. And he's standing. Um, oh, what am I called? He's, he's not standing upright, but he's slanted. Let's put it that way. He's he's not flat on the box. Um, and I used the same pink lemonade acrylic spray, that, uh, acrylic paint that I'd used on the buckle. I used to do the sash, touch up a couple of the flowers, and do the heart that he's carrying. He, she, she. Um, and just touch up lighter on the little angel wings just to blend in with the rest of the pink so that's, we call her a her because she's got pink on um, then down here, I just to pretty it up a bit I put some vintage colour string pearls um, some amethyst glass beads that I got out of a um, lovely necklace that I bought from a thrift shop which I taken all apart so these ones are sort of rectangle beads which are rather lovely and they're glass and I sort of put them on top of each other like little logs and that's a little flower one that came off and there's one over here as well um, and then there's just these little tiny ones that were sort of like spaces between the big ones so they've just dotted them around there's some small mocha coloured um, flat back pearls I put them right across the little flowers of the, this lace but you can't you only see two now so that's that. Um, then I made a stick pin. And I haven't glued it in yet. Oh, I won't take it out. Um, you can see it all. I'd it's the same colour off this. It wasn't off the same necklace. It was something I bought. A whole packet of these in the large and the next size down for, I think it was a dollar fifty from a second hand shop last week. So that was great. I thought gosh they're so big I can't use those but actually perfect for this and I put a little um, mulberry coloured purply mulberry coloured pearl down the bottom of that to hold it and a little silver butterfly on that is the top and it's got a crystal top anyway and these the little silver butterfly I, I got in a swap from Irene seriously scrapping on YouTube in Australia that was uh, sent over so that blended in very nicely with that thank you Irene and hi um, then I came over to the tulle, I thought the tulle was looking a little bit plain so I stuck on some small pink beads, pearl beads I don't know whether you can see them there but they've they're just been randomly put over so that's the top, that's the back view that's the top of that uh, then I came down to the sides which I'd already covered in the, um, the, eight, the peachy coloured um, crepe de chine fabric uh, and over top of that I put some um, some lace top and bottom there's the fabric down there, there's the lace there and then over that I've put a frill on each layer of um, the sort of um, cream coloured lace popped a little bow in there, a little pink bow there, a little um, organza bow that I got off eBay a few years ago. And then it doesn't have a catch, which is quite a simple, if I can open it now, I probably can't. 
there they go. Now that's what it was like originally. It was that stuff all over. Um, yuck. Some unmentionable things in the bottom there, which you won't look at. Um, so this part was is for rings, popping rings in. And I suppose you just put earrings or whatever else in there. So my idea is that I would rip this out, but I'm a little bit concerned that if I rip that out, that it might just destroy the rest of the box. <laughs> because I have a feeling that this is a homemade, probably made in the 1970s maybe. And it is quite sturdy, but the way it's constructed, if I rip that out, it might just rip everything out, it might destroy the box. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I might cover it with paper, do something with it, and do something with the top, put some lace in the top. I don't know. Anyway, so I just the bottom, all I did was um, I just covered it with a with a paper out of the six by six pad that Irene seriously scrapping in Australia uh, sent me as part of my prize winnings for her, one of her uh, her tag and altered tag and altered box charge, and I've got a video uploading at the moment. Well, by the time this is up, it will have uploaded. Um, so that was out of that six by six pad. And that went very well there because it's neutral colours. And then I just popped on six glass feet. Whoops, dropping it, throwing it away. Yeah, so that's the back. So that's that's my altered box. It's the second altered box I've done now. So um, I'm quite pleased with that. And um, I hope you find it pretty. It's um, it's what I call a bit over the top, but um, it'll look it'll look pretty sitting on my dressing table I think in my pink bedroom I can hear my dog barking outside my big dog my golden retriever when I'm in here filming he and if he's not put in the kitchen with the other two dogs oh I beg your pardon my little dog's in here he's my little papillon is as good as gold he loves being in here with me but if he's not in the kitchen with my Eng English Springer Spaniel Zoe he would just be outside barking too because he wants my attention. He's he's an adolescent, 15 months old, so he's just plain old silly. Okay, well, I'll say bye for now.